So I really appreciate you all coming and listening to what we have to uh, listen uh, from uh, Daniel. And without further ado, I'm going to ask Daniel to, um, are, you, are you here, Daniel? It's me. Okay. Hello, hi. everyone. <laughs> Would you like to Good morning. screen with me or are you okay to talk the way you have you there? Yes. So, uh, I, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ashton. Thanks for having me today. I hope that you've started a wonderful day and hopefully I can give you some good information that you can make a good use of in your businesses. So if you allow me, I can share my screen. Good to see you and thank you for joining us, uh, Daniel. Um, so briefly, I want to tell you a little bit about yourself, your background, what you do, how you help uh, real estate agents. I know you're in the field of legal and um, dealing a lot with landlords and tenants. And we had a long uh, conversation before. So right. here is the speaker and uh, go ahead. It's your time. So uh, my name is Daniel Yusefian and I'm a licensed paralegal. And uh, for some reason, I was dragged into landlord yeah. and disputes. And uh, I have a lot of experience in this field and I've encountered many issues during my uh, practice in this last few years. And unfortunately, it's getting uh, harder and harder uh, because of the current market situation so uh, as we we've, we've decided to you know put it into kind of a webinar or a session like this so we can pass on some information to the good agents that they're working in the current market so today's session is about how to sell a unit with a tenant so uh, I'm sure as a real estate agent uh, all of you have encountered with properties that they had tenants living there okay it's sorry so just want to please uh mute yourself yes yeah, so uh yeah so a lot of people either they're saying their own homes or houses which is not that hard but when you have a when you're dealing with a property that has tenant uh you're dealing with a third person that has interest in that land like uh, it's true that the property is owned by a landlord but there is a third person named tenant that has interest and in living in that property and it's their home and they have rights under you know provincial acts which can't be undermined because if we do we're gonna uh face with more challenges more difficulties and even the landlord may face with several lawsuits so it's better to be careful when we are dealing with these kind of properties. So I'm going to start with, uh, you know, just the first thing that we can do. Can you see my screen, Ashton? Yes. Yes. So the first thing is just to be, we have to deal with the tenants. And we are kind of, as an agent, I believe we are in the middle. As a paralegal, I'm only representing the landlord or the tenant but as an agent you kind of need to work with both sides because uh the landlord expects you to book showing you know sell the house at the highest uh possible price and you have to deal with the tenant on the other side it's something that you have to deal with it like the first thing that I want to mention, uh, the best option is just to try to terminate the tenancy with an agreement, which is called an 11. So if you can reach an agreement with the tenant, say, listen, I am the agent, uh, the landlord is in need of the property. Don't mention a lot of details because later on, if we need to uh, try evicting the tenant for any reason, if you give too much information, that may cause uh, the landlord being like untruthful, which is not a good thing. 
So just come up with a plan, talk to a paralegal, talk to the landlord, talk to the tenant and come up with a plan first. And then you need to go to the tenant. Hey, listen, we understand that you're a good tenant. You're paying rent on time. We understand this is your home. You know, your kids go to school. They love it here. But the landlord is in need of their property. So uh, is there any way that we can terminate the tenancy with an agreement? Uh, you have to be very friendly because they're, they don't like to leave. As I said, it's their home and they don't like to leave that place. But first thing we have to try, if they agree, try to give them more time, you know, instead of one month, two months, give them three months, four months. But it is good if you can get an N11 agreement. N11 is an agreement which is uh, designed by the Landlord and Tenant Board Ontario and it is the best form to use if you want to try to terminate the lease. You need to put everyone's name, all of the tenants, all of the landlord's name on that form. And you need to have a termination date. All of the parties must sign and put a date when they are signing it. So this is very important to have this form because if the tenant does not leave by the promised date, you can go to the landlord and tenant board and get an eviction order based on that form. So it is very important to have that form. However, uh, the tenant may say, no, I'm not leaving this property because they have a right to stay in that property, even if the property is being sold. Selling a property is not a valid reason to evict the tenant unless the purchaser needs it for her or his own use or for one of the valid reasons like I need it for my parent, I need it for my daughter, I need it for my caregiver, which is a different pathway. So any questions up until here? Then you have a question here. Uh, what about if I'm getting bankrupt? I mean, the interest rate is so high, I cannot really maintain and keep the property. I'm in the trouble. So whether I sell it or uh, go bank foreclosure, but I don't want to ruin my credit. So and is there right. any solution for that? The solution is just to sell the unit with the tenant. You need to sell that property with the tenant, which is our uh, next slide and our next uh, topic. Uh, if you have to uh, come to the second level, which is selling the property with the tenant, you have to make sure that you follow the guidelines. You have to tell them, I am the agent, uh, I'm a licensed professional, I've been hired by the landlord to sell the property, I understand your concerns, I know that you're living there, so we're going to do it as, you know, convenient and as quiet as possible so they need to uh cooperate with you and they you can have your showings you have to sell the property with tenants i understand that the house it may not have a lot of you know potential buyers but at least a lot of houses they are being sold with the tenant so the first thing is just you need to serve proper notice of entry to the tenant before each showing. It can't be a one-time thing. Oh, I'm going to sell this property. I'm booking showings. No, it can't be like that. You have to do serve them a notice. Try to get their consent to serve the notices with email because that would be the convenience way for you. Otherwise, you have to put it under their door, you know, there are specific rules or mail it to them, which uh, is more challenging than just giving them the email and try to get their confirmation. That's the best way. You need to give them 24 hours notice minimum prior to your entry. So that's very important because otherwise, if we don't follow the guidelines, the landlord will face with illegal entry lawsuits, and which is not a good thing. So 
after you know giving them the uh, notice you need to on the notice you need to specify why you need to enter the unit because we need to have showings you need to give them a window from uh it can be from eight o'clock in the morning to 8 p.m but you need to specify in a specific window during these hours like for example from five to seven you don't have to give them the exact minutes but you need to be like have a narrow window because uh, you can't just say 12 hours it's just good and sufficient so and uh there was a reason for entry and the time of entry and the 24 hour notice so and on the other side when you're selling the unit with uh, a tenant the buyer may uh force you to just promise that this home is gonna be uh handed over vacant which you cannot do that promise if you have a tenant there even if they tell you that they're gonna leave until you have the n11 and you know the, or an eviction order there you don't have any guarantees because if you just promise the buyer that you're gonna give the uh, position of the house in vacant position that means that the house is empty and if the house is not empty, then you're going to lose the deal. They can just say, oh, I don't want this house. You know, I wanted to move in the house. There is someone living in the house and I don't want this house anymore. So make sure that in your agreement, you have the tenant is living there and either they continue to live there or you can uh, take the next step and serve the proper N12. This is when you have an agreement of purchase and sale. It cannot be before that. After you have the APS, you can serve the proper N12 notice. If the buyer needs the unit for his own use or for one of the valid reasons that is stated on the N12. Like, as I said, I need the unit for my son's use, for my daughter, for my parents, or for my caregiver, something like that. And then the tenant has 60 days usually to leave. It is variable, but at the minimum is 60 days. So after if they don't leave, or meanwhile, you can file the necessary applications, which is an L2 application with the landlord and tenant board. but this will take about minimum four to five months. And the buyer has to prove that. First, we need to prove that the house is sold. We have an agreement of purchase and sale. And then the uh, buyer needs it for his own use or for one of the valid reasons stated on the end 12. Then the board will proceed with the eviction. So any questions up until now? Sorry, any, is there any questions for this part? There was one question um, it was asked in the chat, said if the lease is under two person and then all of a sudden it's home hacking means there are five people living there. Is mm -hmm. N11 helps here or what should we do? uh occupants and tenants are different things so you may have two tenants on the lease and five occupants like five people living there as long as you have the tenant's name on the end 11 it's gonna be sufficient because you you are dealing with tenants not the people living there the tenants they have right under the rta the residential tenancies act not the other occupants unless there is like unauthorized occupants you know other people living in the unit and the main tenants they are not living there anymore but let's assume that this is not the case and the tenants are living there they are sharing the unit with other people you know renting a room they have roommates even if they're if it's not their kids it can be a roommate but the roommate has to live with the tenant 
A roommate is not a tenant. Only who you have on the lease, the person on the lease is considered a tenant. Okay, thank you. And there is another uh, thing that I can uh, add. What happens if you know the tenant has changed the locks and he or she is not allowing the showings? Then you have to uh, give them a notice, which is usually an N5 notice, stating that you have changed the locks illegally and we need access. And if they don't give you access to the unit, then you need to apply to the landlord and tenant board and you need to have the remedies from the board because otherwise it's going to be very difficult to sell the unit. And make sure you don't take pictures unless you have written consent of the tenants. I highly recommend that you don't take any pictures from inside of the house. So let's move on to next chapter. There is another option, which is cash for key. In this option, it can uh, this uh, this agreement can come to the picture at any stage. It uh, it involves uh, you know giving the tenant an eleven agreement and other agreements, but the first thing is that we have to negotiate with the tenant to see how much it costs for them to give up their rights and leave the property. Sometimes, for example, it is better to give them 10,000, 15,000 or 20,000 and sell the unit without the tenant because a unit without the tenant, uh, it has a higher market value than a unit with a tenant because in the current market, no one is willing to buy a property with a tenant because the rate rent is less than what they're going to pay for the current mortgage. So if an investor wants to buy a property with a tenant and they have to keep the tenant, they're not going to buy that property. So, and if they want to just come and use the property for their own use, again, it's going to take time to just go through the landlord and tenant board and get an eviction order. So at the end, it's better to, uh, you know, negotiate and cut a deal with the tenants. In this option, we just give a monetary compensation and just get a promise from them when they're going to leave. So if that's the case, again, we're going to have an N11 signed because that says when they're going to leave, who's the tenant, who's the landlord, when they're going to terminate the tenancy with the signatures. And on the other side, we're going to have a release agreement, which is a settlement agreement, you know, general release agreement. And uh, in that agreement we mentioned in details that uh, the conditions of the settlement and that more important that the tenant cannot sue the landlord in the future for example they cannot say oh there was illegal entry to the unit uh, i didn't enjoy the property or the landlord was harassing me and these guys they didn't move into the property so at, at any stage before the hearing, we can have this agreement signed with an, an 11 and uh, both parties, they will benefit from this agreement, in my opinion. So uh, that's it for now. And if you have any questions, I can answer them now that I hope that you had a you have the whole picture, and if you have any questions, I'm here to answer the questions. Uh, Daniel, I have a few questions here asked by um, by agents on the chat. One of them is, you mentioned that we need a uh, written permission for taking pictures. 
Uh, it's better to have written permission, yes. Okay. The other, so I I think we can manage that one through email. Like we and when we email the tenants, we can indicate there that at certain days we're coming. Is that okay to take a picture? Yes. Okay. So Absolutely. We can use email as a proof. So always have a proof of your action. Yes, you because in the act it says that the landlord or the agents or the purchasers they cannot take pictures from inside the house. So. It's better to make sure that the tenant is okay with this thing. Okay. And if someone is month to month, mm -hmm. are they still under the same rule? Let's say after two years, the first year, the contract is finished. They decided to go month to month. Are they still going through the same procedure with N11? Uh, Ashton, actually, this is a good question. A lot of people, they think that after the contract, the term is done there is no contract actually but the interesting point that we have two kind of contracts of tenancy one is a fixed term contract for example as an agent you do these a lot when you're entering into a tenancy agreement you do like minimum usually a one-year agreement for your clients uh, this means that no one can terminate that tenancy uh, earlier than a year. That is a fixed term tenancy. Like if I go to a place and uh, I sign a fixed term tenancy, which is prepared by my agent, like for one year, I start from today, one year later, it is like let's say end of September, 2024, my uh, lease agreement is finished. That is the end of the fixed term. It means that the landlord cannot serve an N12 or any other notices earlier than that specific date. Like for example, N12, it says give 60 days notice to the tenant, but that's not true in this case. The landlord, has determined he doesn't have to wait but the termination date on the notice it can't be earlier than my contract date he has to wait till end of september 2024 so after that again after that date we have two options either to renew it on a fixed term basis for example i'm going to say again another year end of 2025 However, there is another option which I can just say, listen, I want to do months to months basis. Then on months to months basis, I'm still a tenant. I still have the contract. I still have rights as a tenant. However, if we want to uh, terminate by an, an 11 agreement, as I said, this is an agreement. The termination date can be any date. So for example, you're just entering into an agreement with a tenant and six months later, your client calls you, hey, listen, Ashton, I need my property to be sold. Then either you have to uh, just sell the property with the tenant and tell the landlord you have to wait six months, or you have to again prepare an 11 agreement and have an 11 agreement signed. So that termination date on an 11 agreement can be any date because both parties are happy, both parties are satisfied, and they're agreeing on a certain date. Okay, so if you give an 11 after that one year contract, in fact, you're not bridging the contract terms anymore. So you should be okay, no. it's more open. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the other question along the way of uh, taking pictures permission someone asked if we can use the old pictures of that property I don't think that has anything to do with the tenant you know that has the... nothing to do with the tenant because the okay. tenant did not have the position of the unit at that time and there is nothing like there's no deprivation of privacy you know that you say the tenant will suffer anything so I'd say no there's no problem so it's always better to have pictures like taken before you have you let the tenant in so you can use it later okay another for your question purposes was asking the tenant to leave because we do renovation 
And I, based on my experience, I would say, be careful because that's not an excuse to kick them out and rent it after. So elaborate on that, uh, Daniel. Uh, that's absolutely right. Uh, so the thing is, for renovation purposes, actually, you need to offer the tenant to come back to the unit uh, with the same price. So unless the renovations are really necessary, like the house is just tearing off, you know, the building is falling off, everything is just going out of the way. So you don't need to do renovations because that's an extra cost which you will not benefit on. So it is and you cannot kick them out because just you need to renovate. Uh, that has another procedure and we can just have another presentation based on uh, eviction on renovation basis. Okay, so but for the skews of putting a uh, kitchen backsplash, you cannot ask the tenant. Leave. Absolutely it has, not. It has Absolutely. to have some hazardous uh, uh, effect into health of the tenant. Yes. Absolutely. And ask them to leave. And they can, they can come back after... And they detail. can come back after the renovations are done. Even if it takes a, a year? Even if it takes a year. If they're willing to come back, they should come back. Okay. And so. then you need to just uh, go to the landlord and tenant board and satisfy that these renovations are necessary and you have the permit and what's the purpose of these renovations. Okay. And if a tenant for any reason refused to leave, what is the procedure? Uh, let's say... First of all, we cannot increase the rent just based on what you like. Let's say from today you pay five hundred dollars more. Of course, you cannot do that no, if your okay. building is older than two thousand eighteen. Correct? Yes, that's correct. And and it's just like end of two thousand eighteen. So I'd say the buildings they were built after two thousand nineteen. So and it's not all the buildings. There there like four to five lines to the act so that you need to make sure that the new building it, it uh, complies with all of the uh, specifics in the act so no you cannot increase the rent if you want to increase the rent you have to go by the guidelines and you need to give the tenants a notice which is n1 if i'm not mistaken uh, we have many notices prepared by the landlord and tenant board, and you need to give them three months notice prior to increasing the rent. Can you sign an N11 at the day that they are occupying the property with these agreements? Absolutely not. One of the one of the uh, like the things that it's mentioned on the N11 agreement, it clearly states that you cannot just have the tenant sign this agreement when you're entering into a contract with the tenant. So, uh, so that is not an option. Okay. Um, one of the questions here said with uh, the N12, there's a clause mm -hmm. to put the offer that states that the new buyers hold sellers harmless if tenant does not move out does that uh, protect the seller so Meaning if if i take over as a new buyer mm -hmm. i'm not going to harm or go crazy on the on the rent with the tenant that is already sitting there is that correct uh sorry i didn't understand the question so if, if as a new buyer i take over mm -hmm. the place using an 11 uh it means that my new ownership of the house as a new landlord i cannot harm the tenants in different ways to kick them out no you I'm cannot sure. like uh, the, if the tenant remains in the unit and if you take over the property as a new purchaser uh you have the same contract with the tenant same price same rights same obligations you cannot just say, oh, I'm the new landlord. I don't like you as a tenant. I'm going to kick you out. That is not an option. So that's why the buyers, they will insist to just have the vacant position of the unit. Okay. And the they, question because is... they want to just have a new tenant with a new rate, right? Okay. Is there any resources for the landlord um, that facing a tenant that refused to leave because they pending eviction 
Is there any further steps you should take? You know, the, the best thing, uh, I would encourage all of the landlords to become familiar with their rights and specifically with the tenants' rights. And that can be done by, uh, you know, uh, doing like some web search on the landlords and tenant board website uh, by reading the uh, Residential Tenancies Act. And there is like other uh, resources like landlord self-help that they can become with their, uh, that they can become familiar with their rights. So, and another way is just to get legal consultation from, you know, lawyers or paralegals who are practicing in this field. So, but before, you know, just uh, buying a property for your client, it's always good to prepare them for what they may face in the future. Because I've heard from a lot of uh, people that, oh, my agent told me buy this property and the tenant will pay your mortgage. And after 25 years, you're going to have a property in your name fully paid off. That is the best case scenario. But as all of us know, there is nothing like in life that is 100 percent, you know, uh, good. We have to be realistic. We have to tell them, okay, you're, you have obligation to, you know, fix the ceiling. If there is, you know, a leak, you know, you have to go and change the toilet. Uh, you have to be prepared financially just in case if your tenant doesn't pay you for six months, at least you have, you know, you can keep your property and you don't have to hand it to, over to the bank. So it's the most important thing, the most important part of becoming a landlord is not just signing the contract and buying the property, is being prepared for what is coming in the future. All right. Uh, it seems the, uh, the law in Ontario is very tight when it comes to protecting the landlord. Um, is there anything that is opening up or changing? I don't believe so. The only thing that has changed it is uh, one of the uh, rent control, like that you've mentioned, like some buildings that they're ex exempt from the rent control rules, uh, which is, you know, I'm not sure whether they're going to change that and just uh, make all the buildings like covered by rent control rules or they may say okay let's have you know a fair market or whatever it is let's go based on the market price so i don't know what's happening in future but for now you know the tenants they have a right to stay in the property as i mentioned it's their home and they have security of tenure, which means they shouldn't be kicked out of the property for any unreasonable thing. So I'd say the, the landlords, they have to be careful with what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've heard the story, and uh, this is one of the questions, if after they sign in 11, the day that is, uh, it is the closing, you know, the tenant surprised you by not leaving. So mm -hmm. I think you have to go through the, that eviction regardless it takes three months or six months or one yes, year. Yes, yes. But at least, you know, you have an agreement that you can show to the board, listen, this, we had an agreement. Uh, it was voluntarily. They just signed it and now they're not leaving. And as long as you just disclose that to the buyer, you should not have a problem. Okay, a few things I, I bring it up here as experience. First of all, never ever go head to head with a tenant. Always be self nice and understanding right. and try your way out into that uh, closing deal. Uh, secondly, never over, um, never talk on behalf of the, uh, the landlord. What well, landlord told me this and this. So don't right. just keep it quiet. Just listen as much as you, you could and just come with most effective 
way of communicating uh, with the tenant. Sometimes they are exactly. looking for excuses or reason. Oh, uh, your your tenants, uh, your uh, your agents say that. So I hold you accountable for what your your representative told you. So this is uh, this is what you have to be careful based on my experience. Is that right, uh, Daniel? That is absolutely right. You have to be always, you know, positive, and you have to be always open for, you know. Uh, negotiations with tenant and you have to always listen to their concerns even if that concern is not you know valid concern but as i said it's their home and no one really wants to leave like imagine if you're a tenant and if you're living in a property and you've spent some tenants they've spent few years like they had kids over there you know the, the kids are grown up so they were attached to that property so it's not gonna be some people they are easy going as soon as you tell them leave they're gonna say okay i don't care i leave but yeah. some people they take it serious so <laughs> you have to be careful well i appreciate that um i agree with some of the comments here went on uh, on chat that this is not fair it's tougher for uh investors listen i'm investing for the last 20 years i went through all of them what was the most effective way for me to deal with my tenants was two things along the way of tenancy whether it takes one year or five years I'm always nice to them I try to walk with them and make I always tell them you're part of family kind of let's work together that helped 100 percent of the time and never ever go head to head with your uh, even if they want okay can we start selling the house in a week from now because we have party that's no problem we can arrange that just go along the way, show them that you're human, they are human, you're nice people. Um, reminds me door knocking. Sometimes some other agents ask me to help them with door knocking. I said, okay, when you face someone that's angry, open the door. You don't go head to head. He said, sir, you, I I'm just wanted to present myself because everybody in this neighborhood are nice. What does it mean? It means you have to be nice too. Yeah, have to be and, nice too. And, that always always work when it uh, comes to um, to other people. So let me take this screen back here. That is right. And Ashton, one more thing. Uh, this is my uh, business information. So I do a lot of online hearings, online consultation. So if any of you have questions, my phone number is 647-544-3247 and you can just visit my website at wirelesslegalservices.ca. I really That's... appreciate you coming here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having Thank me. for sharing your time with us. By the way, uh, for next week, we are going to have continuation of our Realtor and uh, AI and how AI is helping Realtor. That's going to be part four. What we did so far was part one, two, and three. And on part three, we presented the... Uh, the lead magnet, which uh, which uh, this is one sample of lead magnet. This is a posting I put to Facebook. And by the way, to generate all these leads, it is free. So why don't you uh, take advantage of it? So what's happened through that uh, lead magnet on Facebook, for instance, I created back was in April, I created 1,635 leads. So these are sellers. So this is free, guys. Use it. It's all given to you. And if you go on my sure. YouTube channel, there are a ton of resources. These are interviews I had with all the top-notch investors across Canada. Uh, we had a webinar with them, and they are sharing a lot of uh, experiences and uh, hacks and tips that they could to <laughs> help you uh, be successful in investment. You can send that one to your client, or you can use it and uh, is a great source of information for you. Also, some of you are not part of my Facebook channel. This is a Facebook for all the real estate agents, it's successful real estate agents uh, regarding health, family, and business, that what it matters. So you can go there and every uh, few days, I put good resources of information for you to be successful in your, um, your real estate. And I think we answer all the question. If you have any, uh, if you have any question, you can book a call with me and I can help you to be as successful as you could. 
and um, with any uh, anything in your uh, real estate if you need help with video uh, production YouTube just name it I'm here to help you all of you and thank and you very much. Ashton sorry uh just one more thing to add uh whatever I said these are not legal advice so if uh every case has its a specific uh it's unique has its a specific you know uh matters that we have to deal with and it's better to always have someone a professional with an experience to help you with selling a property with a tenant and with you know dealing with the tenants absolutely I appreciate you coming and uh, no thank you hope to see you soon thank you have a good day everybody thank you for it.